I'm going to go ahead and start. Thanks, everybody. Um, appreciate you coming. You have lots of things to go to, and you came to this one. If, if it stinks and you want to leave, that's cool, too. I'm all right with that. So a thing about questions, I may go pretty quick, and we might, yeah, come on in. Um, I practiced a little bit in the hotel just to see how long it would go, but I like to leave a lot of room for questions. So I, if, if there's something and you want to just raise your hand and shout it out, please do. Don't, you don't have to wait till the end. Um, so there's... Four tools that I'd like to talk about during this process that we'll use. OpenSCAP, Ansible, the Compliances Code Repository, which is a collection of, of software, bash scripts, Python, uh, and Python pandas and NumPy. So are these all familiar? Has anyone heard of any of these? Has anyone used any of these? OK, one or two hands. All right, cool. So maybe we'll cover something new. if. Um, if I leave something out and you've got experience with it, throw it in there if you think it's relevant too. One of my biggest things uh, that I like to say is security doesn't have an end date. And I think this graphic does it. Yes? Are you going to be providing the slides? I can, yeah. Is there, if there's a place to upload them or I will get them to you somehow. So yes, definitely. This graphic tells a good way about it because I like, like that it gives the circle as going out through the process. So just so I have an idea Engineering versus cyber side. Show of hands in the room. Who who is what? Neither. Okay. <laughs> Neither. All right. Cool. <laughs> this this really doesn't have too much to do with Drupal. Drupal can be ancillary from it. This is a little further back on it. So during the steps to the ATO, yeah. If if you if you're in the wrong room and you're like I don't care about this, go ahead. I. I'm not going to be hurt that if you leave. So what we're looking for here is this is this is getting to the ATO process, an ATO authority to operate, like in the federal government. I don't know about other countries. Uh, federal government, Department of Defense, so these kind of things. The process or the, the steps that we actually care about here is two, three, four, and six. They're the ones that are ripe for automation. They're the ones that are also ripe for a lot of the things that can go wrong underneath and behind and where we can spend a lot of our money on. So because it's the government, we like to throw in a lot of different acronyms and terms. So let's do a quick little little quiz. A and A, A and A. Anybody know what that is? Go ahead. Assessment and authorization. Authorization. Cool, you get credit for it because they're terrible. Who's the SAR? Anybody the SAR in this? The S A R. Senior Oh, good. It also can mean a security assessment report, so both are, are good. So cool, all right. So POEMs, everybody likes the POEMs, yes? Plan of action of memorandum. Beautiful, I love it. RMF, it's in, it's in the title of the talk, so. Is it, is it, did I put it in there? Risk management. There you go, perfect. It's the SCA. Security quote, security control assessment. Beautiful, we got them. ACAS. This is a tough one. I had to look it up. I know what ACAS is, but I had to look up what they actually are. Assured Compliance Assessment Solution. Usually Nessus, right? Um, ATO. That's where I thought. Did I miss any? Are there? Yeah, go ahead. Authorized to ATO. Perfect. Thank you. And then ATOC, IATT, all those are mixed in, like continuous ATO, interim authority to operate, little, little no things. ATO. Yeah, uh, depending on your agency, yeah. So some key documents that we like to look for, NIST 853, that's the big one, um, with the federal government, with DISA, with the DOD. A lot of my background is DOD. I've done some federal government stuff, and, um, but mostly with the DOD, but I know there's some overlap in there too. Some other documents, presidential memorandums, there's the zero trust information out there, other NIST publications. FedRAM.gov actually has some really good information of uh, walking through, um, and a lot of the .mil, the, the DISA and the, the NIST websites too. So it's out there, finding it can be difficult sometimes. So let's talk about step number two. We're gonna select the controls. This is the spot where you can do a lot of pre-work that can save yourself a lot in the end, but important. You'll probably be handed a, a huge selection of controls, depending on what you are, whether you're you're doing a DISA stig or you're using the CISA 
benchmarks or anything, there can be, what is this, the stake has like 700 or 800 just for, just for an operating system itself. Um, if you haven't already now, this is the good time to start kind of pre-hardening, because things will start happening pretty quickly, especially when you're working towards ATO, and they come up on you pretty quick. Eliminate the controls that don't apply to you, and we're gonna do like a quick little, uh, a little game in the next slide um, to make it kind of fun. So assume that this is in like AWS GovCloud or Azure GovCloud. I just picked the control that this is a sticking point. Um, what are we gonna do with this control? Is this control even possible to be met in AWS? I'll give you a second to read it. It shows up all the time on the scans, that's why, because it's, anybody have an idea? So what this, what this control is actually saying, you know when you, you turn your computer on before it even boots, you've got that password you have to enter? You could never enter a password if you're running an AWS because you're never going to get your machine booted. So if you can eliminate this now, during your pre-ATO, during the, the, assess, the, the selection phase, you never have to deal with it again. Here's another one. Um, we're all using our PIVs, right? And our CAC cards to access the machines. So does this even apply at this point? Do, we're not using passwords, right? So let's just let's get rid of this this control. There's these are just two examples of ones that you can do a lot of work ahead of time that you won't have to deal with later. No poems, no go back and, and reassessment, any of that. So the first tool that I'd really like to talk about, and this is the one I got the Swiss Army and I picture up about it, is OpenSCAP. OpenSCAP is really powerful. I believe um, it may be backed by Red Hat but it's open source, it's available, there's many contributors uh, for it, for the tool itself. It can do evaluation, remediation, um, includes content as you can see here, I think just the top, it's kind of small on my screen, but I think there's like Fedora, RHEL, um, even some applications, Chromium, Firefox. I think there is a Drupal one in here, so that's why I said it, this talk's kind of secondary to Drupal, but it, it could be applied to Drupal. So not only can OpenSCAP do that, but it gives a GUI for the workbench. There's a command line tool as well. The command line can be a little, have you used it before? Yeah, it's kind of, the command line or the GUI? Go command line. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little, I've got a copy paste thing that I stick it in there. So um, it's nice because you can value in multiple systems and it's a mature product too. It can also generate reports. So as part of the, the pre, the selection phase here, we're working on, uh, where are the vulnerabilities? Well can you talk a little bit about the pre-selection phase? I'm not familiar with that. Um, Just say a sentence or two about what that even is. In number, in number two? Let me go back to where... Uh, yeah. Yeah, the control selection. Because we just got a list of controls and it was like, respond to this and this is your ATO. So I don't, I don't understand the pre-selection phase would be. Yeah, so this is kind of... And somebody helped me out if I if I goof some of it. Got, I'm kind of on the engineering side. so. This is the side where you can take your controls. Like for example, this one. This would be a good time to look at it. And, uh, I assume you've had your systems classified already, right? Okay, so you've been told like high, moderate, whatever it is. So whatever they've told you to fit into, they've given you what a list of 800 controls. So now this is where you would go through and look at what's your system, if you can say, what, where's your system running? So it's it? just a, what do you mean what is running? It's, it's just a website. website. Okay, so yeah, all right. So some of this is a little further back if you were hosting. So this yeah. would be from the hosting side. Mm -hmm. If your application itself will have a very smaller number of limited controls. And here's another, this example doesn't apply to you. Mm -hmm. Is your, is a Drupal application? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in one of those, you may have something that says something about like, uh, I don't know, storing passwords is probably a bad example because Drupal does store passwords, but maybe you're not. Maybe you're using a two-factor. For it. Yeah. You can actually go back to your security and tell them that we inherit the controls or we actually just use two factors. So this doesn't apply to us. And so you, you're actually going to have to manually kind of look through some of these because for the application itself, automated tools aren't as useful uh, as being able to scan like say, say a host, uh, like an ECQ instance or a, a website. So is the pre-selection phase like a, a phase of like talking about which controls apply to you? Yeah, which ones, selecting which ones do apply, and yeah. importantly, selecting things that don't apply, because I'm assuming you're a federal agency or you're working for a federal right. agency, right? So the, the important part and the thing that I always come back to is um, 
these are tax dollars, right? The more time we spend fixing something that we don't have to fix, are things that we could actually just do something way more, way more productive with our money and with, as a taxpayer, with my tax dollars that I'm paying new things for. So, did I answer it? Yeah. Okay, cool. So we talked about reports. Um, yeah, Open Scaffold will do a, a scan on your system, and you could use it now to find out what things you might be vulnerable and things that you may get dinged on once you actually do the actual assessment, which is the next step coming up. The other cool part about Open Scap is, and this is why I call it the Swiss Army Knife of everything, it generates Ansible plays, it can work on operating system, it's COTS, so you can use it right off the shelf. Content based on US baselines, HIPAA, CISA, STIG, GUI based, um, the SCAP workbench is really powerful. It also has a, so Open SCAP has four or five different tools uh, that it includes with it. Um, and one is an aggregator. So you can aggregate all of the scans for different hosts and different systems and put them all together and generate some really cool reports. It also supports containers as well. So this next step is uh, number three, the control the implementation. And this is where you actually, you'll have gotten back your reports. So after you've done your, your selection phase, you'll get a, uh, a list of things that you're either vulnerable for that you need to go and fix, and then you can actually go and implement them. Um, a good idea, why don't, uh, depending on your system, maybe create a golden image. If you're, if you're in the cloud, in Azure or uh, AWS, right now for a, a customer, we use Packer. We build, take a baseline Red Hat image, and then we implement all of the, the controls using uh, OpenSCAP. We've had to put a couple of it. I'll show you a tool how we can use Ansible to kind of update some of those other things. We build a, a golden AMI that has all of these things fixed. It's digged and ready to go. Now there's some things you might have to modify uh, for, for certain things. Maybe the application doesn't work. One thing that I always like to say is, Stig, oh yeah, STIG's a good acronym that I can add. Anybody want to take a guess what that, that is, what that one stands for? Secure Technical. Guide. Right, Secure Technical Implementation Guide is the important part. Don't be scared when there's a control in there and you fail it and you're like, I can never get this because I always say it's a guide, right? You can always come back and say, hey, is this an acceptable risk? Maybe you've got a firewall boundary that this, this will never actually be able to be uh, uh, exploited. exploited. Thank you, exploited. So, yeah, don't be scared. And sometimes security people, just working with them from the beginning and, and and sitting down and having a conversation. So many times there's there's been times where it's all just been like, we just throw it at, they throw it at us and, and then we have to go fix it and we can go back and say, hey, we can't do this or we can do this better maybe. Um, so yeah, open scap can remediate also. Um, you know, if you wanna live on the wild side, hit that remediate button and let it fix it and, and see what it breaks. It you know, might be kind of fun. Um, it also can generate Ansible plays, and we'll come back to Open Scap. We'll find how useful it is um, during the next one. So the next tool that I, I want to talk about also is Ansible. If Ansible, everybody's anybody's heard of it? A couple, yeah. So um, it's not just useful in the security world. It's also useful in like pretty much anything. If you can type it on the command line and configure a system, then Ansible can take over and do it. Create custom ones if you have some some custom criteria that's not there. And you can also use the remediations that are generated by OpenSCAP if you choose your content. Uh, say, for example, uh, you find that you're running Red Hat 7 and you've got a custom guide. You can actually have OpenSCAP generate an entire list of Ansible tasks for you that you can just run. This is just a, an example of it. you use YAML to write Ansible. Um, and this is pseudo semi-code, but this actually will just install the NTP dates package. This is what Ansible looks like if you've never used it. It's, you know, it gets a little more complicated than that, but from the beginning, that's just to install something. Another tool um, that I find to be really useful is, and these all do have a little bit of overlap, is the Compliance as Code project. It not only has updated Ansible tasks for the different content that you need. Um, say for example, your stigs, your uh, CISA, bench, your, um, yeah, CISA benchmarks. Um, I haven't looked to see if they generate Drupal, but they they actually can produce it in, uh, in Ansible or shell scripts. 
uh, just a big long bash script that you can use to remediate your system. You can also run it uh, in a dry run mode. You could use it as, as and, and that content's there. All you have to do is just download it and run it. So the shell script is really easy if you don't want to install Ansible uh, on your system maybe, or you don't want to do the network connectivity, or maybe it's air gapped. Um, the bash script can be really useful because I'm pretty sure none of them require internet connectivity to actually do any of the, um, the right, they don't, yeah, yeah, so they're completely, um, you may, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, do you no. have questions throughout or should I wait to Please, you? throughout, it helps, it helps me refine as I go and it also, if you have a question, maybe somebody else does too. Yeah, I'd love to get some examples of controls that this would be. What, of that Ansible or compliance yeah, or code? Compliance code, yeah. Um, all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if, probably if, yeah. if you're in the federal space and you can throw something at it, it's probably in there already. When we're done, I'll go. Uh, I'll pull up the website. We can look at it. Okay. Yeah. It's it's on GitHub. Yeah. Okay. Some of these overlap. So if you're looking at uh, Ansible one, they have scripts that the compliance code may not have, and so that's where sometimes you can look at both and see yeah. what's missing as you're getting your printouts and stuff like that, and you can kind of compare and then adjust uh, either one to, to based on the scripts. Right. The Ansible plays actually include almost every tag that you might need, um, so you don't have to use all of them. If you've got your collection of, say, 70 that you want to apply, you can just say Ansible apply these tags, and then you don't have to worry about the, uh, like, Maybe you don't want to turn FIPS on. Maybe you might not be able to. Maybe your application doesn't work with FIPS, um, so you can skip that part. Yeah. So, um, step four, we're in the assessment phase. You'll be actually evaluated. Probably somebody will run Nessus and ACAS on it, and you'll get a huge spreadsheet back. Uh, really, what they're looking for, the assessor, is 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 it secure, based on the criteria that you chose for it. Is your system secure? Likely you've missed a few things. Um, hopefully you don't get you know, spreadsheet with this like this, although it happens, it's a big, uh, and we'll show you something here in a minute that we can use to kind of uh, remediate some of that. So again, the two tools that are probably the most useful for this is OpenSCAP, because you can generate reports as you go. Uh, say you fix something and then you can do another scan on it, make sure, cool, we've crossed that one off, we can use the evaluation. Um, and then Ansible also, has some some dry run plays that you can that you can use that'll just just to check your progress as you're going. So these are things that uh, instead of the in this particular project, the security process can take a week. Um, so we'll fix it and then we'll go back to security and say, okay, can you just do like a just to make sure that we're still on track, that everything's good, there aren't any vulnerabilities out there, can you run another scan? And so a week passes. Whereas it's nice to actually be able to just say, okay, we fixed it, let's run another scan and see, uh, we can iterate much faster so it can speed things up. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is the third one. So when you get handed that, that list of spreadsheet, um, and you'll probably have to do some poems for it, which can be uh, daunting, you know, at, at best, and, and easy, not easy at all. Uh, so what I did is I actually, because I, I looked at them and I, Realize that a lot of these responses are, are pretty boilerplate. You know, like category one, you have 30 days, 60, 90 days. Well, that could be automated with code. So uh, the Pandas, Pandas module and the NumPy module with Python, I feed it the spreadsheet. It fills it in for me. It gives me the completion date, the milestones, because it's all relatively boilerplate with most of this stuff. Some of this stuff you're going to have to have a human go back and look at it and say, you know, we may not be able to do it. But you can automate a lot of the stuff and then get the hard stuff that you have to do. Um, talk to your talk to your cyber team. Maybe they'll maybe they'll give you spreadsheets that are standardized and have the right columns. And what what Pandas and NumPy does is it kind of just takes a spreadsheet, puts it into uh, Python, and makes a spreadsheet inside of it. Spreadsheets are very just not automation friendly because they're binary. They're hard to read. They're hard to to manipulate so. And then the last step is is monitoring. Um, there's probably a tool, Nessus and ACAS is probably what your your overarching IT is gonna or your your security, but you can actually get behind it a little bit uh, with using uh, OpenSCAP again. You can you can run the scans. Um, even using Ansible itself to enforce continuous state. So once you've got those controls and you've met them. I mean, 
none of us have ever like Chamad 777 on a file system before, right? So we don't. When that happens, you can actually just nightly, whatever cadence you want to run this on, um, have Ansible fix it. And you know, hopefully your application doesn't break, but if it does, you, know, you should probably shouldn't have been doing that in the first place. Uh, OpenSCAP can do that, Ansible can do that. Those are all uh, very, very helpful tools to use. So uh, yeah, that's, that's it. And I went pretty quick, so 20 minutes. I told you I'd probably be done quick. So again, security, security doesn't have an end date. So that being said, any questions that I know you wanted to look at um, the compliance as code project, right? Anything else while I have the slides because I'll have to exit out. All right. Um, it would be cool to just have a just go around the circle and like what are each of those for the ones we don't know. What are which ones? What are you? So like SP eight hundred eighteen. I don't know what that is. Like, is it important to know what each of these are? There's some of them. I actually don't know what that is. I'll be honest with you. Right. I, I stole the graphic from <laughs> Open Controls. It's, I'm sure. It's in this publication, this SP 800 yeah. yeah. I was going to say, it's, yeah. it's a publication. What is, what is that actually? Um, 853 is like mine, the main one. What's the, what's SP, what's that one cover? It's special publications, so um, I couldn't tell you specifically. It's the Guide for Development Security Plans for Federal Information Systems. Just knowing it's not. What, uh, what agency are you? HHS. Is that a DOD based? No. Which which uh, which which one is she gonna have to follow? I saw him shaking his head, so he knew what. I'm doing 853. All of them. Yeah. Well, so 853 will be like your guide. It'll be a big. Big one for you. Um, the other special publications. I always, I always stole this because it's got. I liked how it, how it put this in a circle. That was, that was the part that I liked. Like the category. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. So yeah, I can't. Um, I don't know all of them to be honest with you. I can tell you like these ones here. So. Yeah, the last thing for sec two. There's usually, I think, a final line. There's some matrix that will kind of show you the, where they overlap and things like that. So it's, yeah, sure. Are you are you hosting it yourself? No, it's just in the cloud. Project. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's well. So. So the, we inherit a whole lot of controls. A lot. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a good. Um, you know, I'm cool if you self-host it because then you know you can pay me lots of money to do it. But really, as a taxpayer, why? You know, unless it doesn't meet your thing, because that's the thing you've got. Like, um, were you here to the last talk? Were you at the? Okay, so um, you know, he was talking about a lot of a, a lot of people self-host Drupal, and and that's great, but then you're accepting all that maintenance to it, all the security. You know, you who's gonna you have a firewall that you're gonna put in front of it, especially now. Look at all the controls you can inherit. Um, yours should be. I think even cloud.gov don't they give you a document that. Um, like just a way that you can just walk right through. I think they give you a pretty easy way to. Is it still Pivotal Cloud Foundry underneath? Yeah. 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 So there's there's a lot of stuff that's been done um, for you that should make it really simple for you. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Let me see if I can. Um, I'm going to set my display back to not extended. It can be, so I'm trying to remember if somebody, yeah, okay, so there's all the, all the controls that they produce. Um, yeah, I don't see, it would probably be under the SRG section, right, if we were looking for a Drupal specific one. Yeah, but so here, here's a lot of the, the controls if you were looking for them. 
Um, now you can't just grab these. These are ones that they actually use to generate, um, to actually generate the, the plays and the bash scripts from it. But so that's the example that you were looking. For. So can you go through a specific example of like one control and how it would be met here? I don't um, quite understand yet what this is doing. So this, uh, let's say, all right, so let's take, um, let's say we're going to try the CIS rel 8 controls. And the content in here is where all of the criteria that that particular control has. Um, and probably reading this may not, well, all right, so let's pick this one just for fun. If it's, you sort of have to kind of read into it, but this control, this particular one, and I'm not familiar with CIS as much, I, I should have picked the state one, but uh, say 1.1.1 says you must disable the CRAMFS kernel module. And so this will actually produce, once you compile it, this will produce either a bash script or an ansible or both that will disable the CRAMFS for the kernel module. So most of what these controls are taking care of are probably not relevant to us on cloud.gov, right? Like this would be at the cloud.gov level. Yeah. Yeah, so the okay. so yeah, you don't even have to worry about any of this stuff. Um, Got it. So I didn't see a Drupal one in here. Um, yeah. and I don't have OpenSCAP installed. Uh, I was looking for one with maybe a an application. I mean there's a there was a Firefox one that might not be as uh, an example of a non, um, like a non-server or operating system one would be if you were to, I just saw one because we were using, there's a Windows server that has um, Edge installed. And so there was a particular setting that needed to be set within Edge to make it compliant, uh, to not accept some certificates or something from it. So that would be one that it could actually just automatically fix that for you, uh, like say from an application level. Yeah. No other questions, anything? Cool, I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for coming and uh, welcome to hang around for another one. Thank you. So turn the recording off now?